Do, do you wish you owned Netflix? Um. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 dumbest statements by corporate execs. For more discussion on topics like this, check out our business channel, Context TV. A lot of people don't belong in our clothes and they can't belong. Are we exclusionary? Absolutely. Africans want to work and its workers are willing to work for less than $2 per day. After the fact, it looks unbelievably stupid. For this list, we're looking at the most out of touch, damaging, or inappropriate statements made by corporate executives. Can you think of any other dumb lines? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10, the music industry as a sick dog. Doug Morris. Whoa, we're not stealing, okay? We're just sharing with each other, you know? It's no secret that the music industry was utterly rocked, no pun intended, by file sharing sites like Napster, which allowed anyone instant and free access to every major album and song. It was on college campuses with high-speed internet that Napster really took off in the fall of 99. So uh, how many MP3s do you have on your computer? About 600. Maybe like 100 or something? Uh, six or 7,000. The music industry floundered, including Universal Music Group CEO Doug Morris. During a profile with journalist Seth Manukin, Morris claimed, quote, they just didn't know what to do. It's like if you were suddenly asked to operate on your dog to remove his kidney. What would you do? If hiring someone with digital business acumen sounds like a good idea, then Morris is quick to rebut with, quote, I wouldn't be able to recognize a good technology person. Phrases like good technology person tell you all you need to know about the music industry shakeup in the 2000s. The thing about music is that music should be available to anybody that wants to hear it. I think that, that there should be no such thing as a price tag on music. Number nine, an electric toy, William Orton. From 1867 to 1878, William Orton served as president of the Western Union Telegraph Company. It was also around this time that Alexander Graham Bell was patenting the first telephone and starting AT&T. Telephone, huh? What about your telegraph? Oh, I'm, I'm gonna give that up. This is much bigger and, and newer. In 1876, Orton and Western Union actually had the option to buy Bell's patent for $100,000, a considerable sum in the 19th century. He declined and defended his decision with a question. Quote, what use could this company make of an electric toy? Of course, hindsight is always 2020, but Orton's disastrous decision may be one of the biggest business blunders in American history. Telephones quickly spread throughout the world, and Bell became a household name. Did you know who William Orton was before we told you? After the fact, it looks unbelievably stupid. You just can't believe it. Maybe it's often given as one of the worst business decisions in the history of the United States. Number eight, high value programming, Jeff Bucus. Much like Napster, Netflix completely changed the TV and movie industry by introducing streaming as a widespread form of media consumption. What Napster introduced America to was the idea that you could have a very large menu of content at your fingertips and you could hit a button and get that delivered. In Hollywood, the move toward direct-to-consumer business models has been incredibly disruptive. Back in 2010, Netflix was in its infancy, and it had just made a deal to stream movies from distribution companies like MGM and Paramount. You watch Netflix on your PC or on your TV through a game console or other devices connected to the internet. Wow, that's fast. Time Warner CEO Jeff Bucus was quick to criticize their business model, saying, quote, at eight to ten dollars, it doesn't have the economics to support high value programming. He also compared Netflix to the Albanian army, asking, quote, is the Albanian army going to take over the world? I don't think so. He was decisively proven wrong. Netflix did take over the world, and their economics has supported $200 million blockbusters and Oscar-winning films. Do, do you wish you owned Netflix? Um, you know, you know, the, the only good answer for that, since it's worth how much? It's worth 20 or $30 billion? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wish I owned it personally. Number seven, no ugly people, please, Mike Jeffries. Until 2014, Mike Jeffries served as the CEO of popular clothes retailer Abercrombie & Fitch. In a 2006 interview with Salon, he explained their marketing philosophy as being, quote, exclusionary. Specifically, he said, quote, Candidly, we go after the cool kids. 
we go after the attractive, all-American kid with a great attitude and a lot of friends. A lot of people don't belong, and they can't belong. Are we exclusionary? Absolutely. Shoppers on Park Avenue had a few things to say to Mr. Jeffries. I think it's going to affect their business because if they're only letting a certain type of people buy their clothes, then it's kind of going to hurt them. He went on to criticize companies that embraced people of different sizes and ages. When the comment faced backlash, Jeffries apologized and claimed that Abercrombie & Fitch doesn't discriminate based on, quote, individual characteristics. Not only will I not let my kids shop at Abercrombie again, I will not let them wear what they already have in their closet. Number 6. Cars are a novelty. Michigan Savings. When it comes to tech, it's tough to predict the future. As such, more than a few people have spectacularly misjudged the potential of new technologies. In the early 20th century, Henry Ford wished to incorporate his automaker company, so he hired a lawyer named Horace Rackham. Rackham personally bought $5,000 in Ford stock, against the advice of Michigan Savings Bank. Their president told Rackham, quote, The horse is here to stay, but the automobile is only a novelty, a fad. In 1919, Rackham sold his stocks for $12.5 million and spent the rest of his life giving money to charity. Number 5. Less Than $2 a Day – Gina Reinhart Worth an estimated $15.6 billion US, Australian mining magnate and heiress Gina Reinhart generated immediate controversy with a video posted to the Sydney Mining Club's YouTube channel. In the 2012 clip, she lauded Africa on the grounds that, quote, Africans want to work and its workers are willing to work for less than $2 a day. Such statistics make me worry for this country's future. Indeed, few now could have missed the reports of companies running a ruler again over investments that were in the pipeline. The Australian Prime Minister Julia Gillard was quick to counter, saying, quote, It's not the Australian way to toss people $2, to toss them a gold coin, and then ask them to work for a day. She added, quote, We support proper Australian wages and decent working conditions. Number 4. Kicking Cigarettes – James Morgan it's a well-established fact that nicotine is addictive and that quitting smoking is difficult. Chandler, what are you doing? Chandler! Oh my god! <laughs> You're smoking again? Well, actually, yesterday I was smoking again. Today I'm... I'm smoking still. <laughs> However, according to tobacco executive James Morgan, quitting smoking is similar to quitting candy. In 1997, tobacco companies faced a $5 billion class action lawsuit filed by flight attendants who had been diagnosed with cancer due to secondhand smoke. During a deposition, Morgan was asked if cigarettes are addictive. He claimed they weren't, saying, quote, If they are behaviorally addictive or habit forming, they are much more like caffeine, or in my case, gummy bears. The bizarre correlation was widely touted in the media. A company spokesperson rushed to do damage control, saying, quote, If people think he was relating gummy bears to smoking, they would be misinformed or misdirected. Number 3. The iPhone – Steve Ballmer The first iPhone was released in June of 2007, instantly transforming the way mobile phones were made and used. However, Microsoft CEO Steve Ballmer was not having it. In an interview with USA Today shortly before the iPhone was released, Ballmer said, quote, There's no chance the iPhone is going to get any significant market share. No chance. He continued with, quote, I'd prefer to have our software in 60% or 70% or 80% of them than I would to have 2% or 3%, which is what Apple might get. Right now, well, let's take phones first. Okay. Right now, we're selling millions and millions and millions of phones a year. Apple is selling zero phones a year. In six months, they'll have the most expensive phone by far ever in the marketplace. And let's see, you know, what's the expression? Let's see how the competition goes. It is currently estimated that Apple has about a 40% share of the U.S. smartphone market and 11% globally. This is yet another hilarious case of hindsight being 2020. When the name of your company is Microsoft and your formula works, yeah. our formula was working. Number two, right to water. Peter Brabeck Letmatha. This CEO of Nestle found himself in some very hot water after the release of a documentary called We Feed the World. 
In the documentary, Brabeck Letmata infamously claimed, quote, the one opinion which I think is extreme is represented by the NGOs who bang on about declaring water a public right. That means that as a human being, you should have a right to water. That's an extreme solution. Human rights advocates were quick to challenge the claim. Brabeck Letmata later changed his statement, saying that water for survival and hygiene is a right, but not for things like swimming pools or car washes. Those require a price. We must transform the way we think about water. By 2025, 1.8 billion people will be living in regions without enough water. Water scarcity is the greatest challenge we face today. The damage, however, had already been done. You was at Nestle. You're supposed to be happy. It's like making cocoa for people. And this guy's like going, well, people are running out of water. What if we owned all the water and we kept it under our place? Want more mojo? Context TV produces original, high-quality videos on business, entrepreneurship, and politics, but from a different point of view. The battle is being fought between Netflix and YouTube. The Federal Reserve should remove all of the current board members who served during the fake account scam. If you want exclusive interviews with industry leaders, in-depth media analysis, and documentaries with a fresh take on the state of business, check out Context TV. Number one, total crap, Gerald Ratner. People say to me, how can you sell this for such a low price? I say because it's total crap. The infamous Ratner blunder may forever remain the most famous and damaging. Ratner once served as the CEO of a major jewelry chain known as Ratner's Group. The business was prosperous and popular throughout the 80s and early 90s, until Ratner publicly condemned his own products. During a conference speech, Ratner joked that his products were, quote, total crap, and that a prawn sandwich would last longer than the company's earrings. Well, I have to say, the sandwich will probably last longer than the earrings, but anyway. <laughs> While the jokes were met with laughter, the public was none too happy. The remarks cost the company 500 million pounds, nearly resulted in bankruptcy, and lost Ratner his job as CEO. I mean, it had a horrendous effect on the business. Sales collapsed overnight. They said I said it in private uh, behind my customer's back. Which, how could I say it in private behind my customer's back at the Albert Hall? Uh, and it was televised. The company's name was changed to Signet Group to distance themselves from the controversy. And Ratner's name became synonymous with a major business gaffe. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.